Hello, happy, happy Tuesday. It's Wendy Lee, your Creatively Yours Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I um, am excited to see you all today. I, I'm really excited that you're joining me. So today I have a special little treat box I'm going to share with you. I am creating these for some of my team um, recognition this month and you know as if you've been watching my blog the past couple of days I am loving this silly way to goat stamp set and as soon as I saw the way to goat I was like oh that's a perfect celebration hey Joan hey Amelia so glad you guys could join me um so anyway it's a little weird to put a diamond ring with a goat but it isn't when you know that my, my team name is Diamonds. So I don't spell it like a traditional diamond. I spell it D-I-E because I love die cuts. So it works out perfectly and everything's sparkly. So that's fun. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to create this super cute um, treat box. And it's actually fast and easy to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So move the stamp set out of the way. I do want to let you know the box itself is created with the little treats dies. So this um, die set is actually um, not available just yet. It'll be available August 4th with the launch of our um, August to December mini formerly known as the holiday catalog. So to me, it's still the holiday catalog, although they don't name it that anymore, but um, it's packed full of some awesome, awesome things. So this gives you a sneak peek at this, and this die makes doing a cute little box like this super fast and easy. I'm also featuring this designer paper here, which is part of the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series Paper Pack. Again, this will be available um, August 4th, but I want you to see some of these great designs. Isn't that awesome? I love that the background is more of a wash um, versus just snowflakes, but the snowflakes I think are really cool. So I think we're gonna be able to do a lot of great things with these papers. I am offering a paper and ribbon share for the holiday catalog. That sign up is going on now if you have any interest. This is the one we're using for our project today. Um, cool, right? I really think this is so much fun. So that's a really cool paper pack that we are using today. Of course, the Way to Goat stamp set you can get right now. Yay! All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna take this largest die here, which is the box base, and a half a sheet of Balmy Blue uh, cardstock. You don't really need a half a sheet. I'm just a little bit lazy. So really five and a half by about seven. And I'll make sure I put all the measurements um, in the comments after or in the description after the video so you guys got the complete supply list and all the measurements so you've got all of that so oh yeah hey ginger uh, yes i love the snowflakes as well i will tell you guys on august 1st we're not we're not posting till august 1st all the details but our next stamp and escape is going to feature that snowflake splendor suite and i am super excited about it so dana and i are making lots of great plans and wonderful projects for all of you so, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this, obviously this way, because you want the die side down. I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my die cut embossing machine. And so I end up with this piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my bone photo out and go ahead and just put a nice crease on each of these score lines. You could use this box as is or I'm gonna actually decorate it with some designer paper. So I'm gonna do another layer of die cutting actually. So this is gonna fold in and those tabs will push in and then this will fold up and make the box. Super, super easy to do. I don't think I folded that one up. Let me go ahead and get that one down too. So fast and easy. And you can even change this treat box up a little bit if you cut down one of these tabs, cut it off, so that you had more of a pocket in the front. I'll have to show that another day because I'm not doing that today. All right, next I'm gonna run, um, I've got a two inch strip of the designer paper and I'm gonna run this through the die again this way. Now, you don't really need this center piece and I'm actually gonna show you how to cut that away, but I found that I had better luck, and I cut this pretty narrow because I'm trying to save as much my paper as possible. So two inches works perfectly, but if you do the shorter 
strips to save that little bit of paper, it I had some trouble with it skewing on me. So I went ahead and found that it was easier to cut it all at once. So we'll run this through our die cutting machine. And then now you've got a piece that looks something like this. So let me move these things out of the way for a moment. And we're gonna bring in our paper trimmer. You could do this with your, your snips if you wanted to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut right along that score line there and give me my two pieces. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so that's my scrap that I'll use for something else. Move my cutter out of the way. And so now I've got these two pieces right here. Fun, right? Love it, love it, love it. All right, let me bring in a little scrap piece of paper. And we are gonna go ahead and stamp the goat in the lower corner of one of those strips. All righty. I love this dancing goat. She looks so happy. Might be a boy, but I'm gonna call it a girl. Yay, so much fun. It's a silly stamp set, but I do really like it. All right, so now I wanna add a little bit of shimmer to her, so I'm going to color her with some Winka Stella. I could do this after the box is already together, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it while it's flat. It's a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna color all over. You may get a little bit of ink bleed when you use Winka Stella over an image like this, but um, I don't think it hurts anything. I wouldn't go too extra crazy with it, but a little shimmer never hurt anybody. Makes it stand out just a little bit too. Okay, I'm gonna be happy with that. I don't know if you guys can see the shimmer. I think it's cool. Maybe you can see it as I move it around. Okay, great. So I wanna go ahead and adhere this to each of my box sections. So let me go ahead and bring in my silicone craft sheet. And I'm gonna use the Seal Plus today. Don't really need to use Seal Plus, but that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I haven't used this one yet, so I thought I'd give it a go and see how it works. The other one's so sticky. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive if I can. Yeah, there we go. Oh, this may not work with the Seal Plus because it's um, a little, yeah, that doesn't break off as easy. Okay, I'm gonna fold that down for what I'm doing, but I wouldn't recommend using the Seal Plus for this upper area here based on what that just did. Um, this is pretty sticky, a um, little more industrial than the Seal is, so I think that you're better off if you don't go that heavy on that upper section. We could have um, put some adhesive sheets on the back of that die cut so we wouldn't have had to worry about it, or we could use a fine tip glue or liquid adhesive. That would work as well, um, but I didn't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And you know what, if I can reach my stamp and seal, I can. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it at the top here. Well. It doesn't really want me to, but I got some on there. All right, we'll move that out of our way, and I'm going to line this up along that scallop edge, and then let that fall down. Cute, 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 cute. All right, so now we're ready to assemble this. So really, you don't need adhesive. The Stampin' Up! was really great to give us those little tabs and fold this in, and then you can just tie your box together but I want to go ahead and adhere mine closed because I, when they open it, I want it to stay structured. So I don't want it to come open like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on mine. Um, so let me bring that Seal Plus back out again and put some little adhesive on those two tabs. Now, you don't wanna go into this section because that's actually the side of your box. And I did that on one of my samples. <laughs> Whoa, almost did it again. Well, all right, there we go. I had not used this one before. Uh, it's got, uh, you can see the perforations in the tape, which is awesome. Oh, it's too strong for this paper. Look at that, I'm tearing my paper already. There we go, I got some down. All right, so now I'm going to fold those out of the way and I'm gonna tuck this tab in. It can be on the front or the back, it really doesn't matter. 
and then I'm gonna lift the side up and stick that down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We'll put this one behind, just so you can tell. It really doesn't matter which way you go about it. The tab can be to the inside or the outside. And I'm gonna fold that up. And again, you don't have to adhere yours. You could have it so that it just comes open. So that's the beauty of this box. How cute is that? It's already so much fun. So I'm just gonna slide a little Snickers down in there. A little mini candy bar. I think that works great. And let's go ahead and cut our pieces that we're gonna use to decorate. So I've got a small uh, scrap of Highland Heather. I think it's about um, an inch by an inch and three quarters. Again, I will put the measurements in the description after the video. And I'm gonna stamp the way to goat. You know, gotta let them know that they're doing a great job. I'm excited for them. Perfect. And then we are going to take this little die from our treat box, and we are gonna run this through our die cutting machine and cut that piece out. Okay, so I've got that there. I also want the ring. So I've got a scrap of foil, and I'm gonna take this little ring die and run that through the die cutting machine as well. And now I've got my little ring. Cute, 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 cute. All right, so I'm gonna bring in some Pool Party Sheer Shimmery Ribbon. This is so pretty. This is in our annual catalog. You can get this now. And I'm gonna string this through. I think I wanna go ahead and adhere this down. So I'm gonna put a couple of mini dimensionals. You could use regular ones. Mini is what I have at my fingertips, so that's what I'm grabbing. I'm gonna put a couple of those down first and put this in place. That way I don't have to try to deal with dangling things at the same time as trying to string that ribbon through. And I want it to kind of stay to the side because I want them to be able to see the goat and how stinking cute that is. All right, so let's get our ring and we're gonna slide our ribbon. Ah, I like to leave my ribbon on the spool when I'm doing this, but I'll go ahead and cut it so you can see that the length actually works well. I'm gonna do about nine inches. Grid paper's handy dandy for that. Then the spool won't be in the way where you guys are trying to watch. Okay. I'm gonna just slide this ribbon through that slot, slide it through the second slot. And I like to tie upside down because if I don't, all my bows end up upside down anyway. I think it's just the way that I tie. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. It's gonna pull that tight so that I want those to come together. You don't have to do it that way. That's just what I've decided I wanted to do. And I'm gonna make my loop loops on both sides, and then one goes over and under. I don't know if anybody ties bows this way but me, but let's see if I can get a hold of it. Good deal. All right, so now I can mess with this bow until I'm happy with it. So I hold my knot, and I pull these tails out. Gosh, I haven't cut a ribbon to length in so long. I always tie it off of the spool. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, so... Now I got a nice pretty ribbon, and if you need to trim the ends, because usually nine inches is a little long um, after it's tied, but it, it makes a easy to tie bow that way. Cute, 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 cute. Love it. And each one is gonna look slightly different depending on where you are. See, like this one's way more blue, where this one's got a lot more of the purple further down. So um, depending on where you are in that strip of designer paper, because it varies as you work through that. Um, so I think it's fun. So each each box will be slightly unique. Um, you know, you could stamp some more on them if you wanted to, but I think it's just lots and lots of fun. So, all right. So you know that um, you could get these items that are coming to us out of the new holiday catalog early if you join my team. So um, we have a lot of fun. We meet once a month, either virtually or face-to-face, -face, and we do prizes and recognition, do a little bit of business, and we most importantly have some fun stamping and making great projects. So if you'd like more information, let me know. I'd love to have you join in. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. So come back, catch me next Tuesday. Be sure to share this with your crafty friends. Leave me a comment, thumbs up, 
Subscribe to my channel if you're watching on the replay. I very much appreciate it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye!